What's up, YouTube? This is 2Raw4TV. So the Milwaukee Bucks survive a, 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 a absolute scare in the fourth quarter, which was a three-point barrage, especially in the second half of this contest, and especially in the fourth quarter by the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, but they survived. Only because of, A, Dame Lillard going off in the fourth quarter, and B, the Philadelphia 76ers making some terrible mistakes down the stretch, including turnovers. Um, but if it wasn't for that, and also the fact that they missed free throws as well. Um, they're normally a team, I think, that shoots well from the line, but tonight, uncharacteristically, you had guys missing free throws. It wasn't for that, Milwaukee could have very well lost this game. And even though Milwaukee gets the victory 118 to 117, and it came against a quality opponent against, uh, against the Sixers, the Bucks got a lot to work on from watching this game. Um, we look at the overall stats for each team. So, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks shot 50% from the floor. And the Sixers shot 51.2% from the floor. The Bucks shot 36.7% from downtown. Most of that was because of Dame Lillard. Uh, but the Sixers shot 45.7% from downtown. And they made 16 out of 35. The Bucks 11 of 30. Uh, both teams had struggles from the foul line. Um, the Bucks. 25 of 36 from the line. Most of that was because of Giannis. Uh, the Sixers were 19 of 28 from the line. So the Sixers were only 68% from the line. The Bucks 69%. The only reason why the Bucks percentage was even that good is because Dame Lillard went like, I want to say 16 of 16 from the line or something. Uh, rebound slightly in favor of the, of the uh, Bucks. Assists. The edge for the Sixers, 25 to 20. Steals, 9 to 8 in favor of the Bucks. Both teams registered four blocks. Turnovers were close, 15 for the Sixers, 14 for the Bucks. But the Sixers' turnovers came at a very inop inopportune time down the stretch of the game. And um, just look at individual players. For the Sixers, their high guy was Tyrese Maxey, uh, 31 points, or 10 of 22 shooting, and he was, I believe, 8 of 9, for 8 of 10, excuse me, from the foul line. Dane Lillard was the high man for the Milwaukee Bucks. He has the biggest uh, point total for a debut for a buck. As you might have heard in the broadcast, the prior uh, best debut for a Buck player was Terry Cummins. 34 points in a game, I think, against uh, Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls back in 1984, I believe. Before that, I believe uh, Terry Cummins played for the Clippers. Dame was now 20 from the floor, but 17 of 17. Okay, so he was 17 of 17 from the foul line. Uh, let's look at let's, let's look at the Sixers first. Uh, Joel and B kind of wonder how he's going to fit in this system because Nick Nurse, I think his system is a little bit faster. Uh, we saw more uh, guard play uh, being uh, more prominent in this game, uh, and and that's good, but that might at times, keep the ball out of Joel Embiid's hands. So I would not be surprised if Joel Embiid's scoring goes way down this year. Like, he averaged 30 in 2022 uh, last year, 2022-23, he averaged 33 points per game. I wouldn't be surprised with the um, rise of Tyrese Maxey. Uh, Tobias Harris, of course, is there. Uh, he, he's a solid guy. He's going to get you 16, 17 points a night in any given night. Now you have also the arrival of Kelly Oubre. I think eventually James Harden is going to be off that team. He's gone, all right? Um, 
You can just see the Sixers are phasing him out. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Joel Embiid drops down more to around 27, 28 points per game this year. Uh, but Joel Embiid, 24 points, only seven rebounds, six assists, one block. But he had seven turnovers, and that was big. Seven turnovers in tonight's game. And he was just falling and flailing all over the court. Uh, now 21 shooting, and he only went three of eight from the line. Um, Shakes Melton, I guess that's who that is, uh, 10 points, 3 of 10 shooting, but he was 2 of 6 from downtown. Uh, P.J. Tucker, at this point in his career, bro, P.J. is not giving you anything offensively. I mean, once again, you see Goose Egg, 0 for 2 from the floor, 0 for 2 from downtown. Um, and, I, and I get the impression from watching him play late last year, this is just one game, but... I think when you look at the fact that on defense it's going to start being diminishing returns for P.J. P.J. got to be, what, 37 going on 38 or 38 going on 39. At some point, he's not going to be giving you the defensive play that you're accustomed to, so it's not even going to justify the fact that he can't give you any points. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if he no longer, for not much longer, he might not even be a starter for that team. Uh, Tobias Harris, 20 points, 8 or 9 shooting. 3-3 three three from downtown. I remember Tobias Harris was playing phenomenal in the playoffs last year for the Philadelphia 76ers for the most part, uh, especially the first uh, round uh, against the Nets. And he had some good games against the Sixers, too, uh, excuse me, against the Celtics, too. Um, Pat Bell only had two points in his debut. Kelly Oubre was unbelievable, man. Kelly Oubre was, I mean, just abusing the Bucks backcourt, especially when he when, uh, when matched up against Dane, man. Uh, 27 points, 9-11 uh, shooting, 5-6 or six from downtown, 4-4 four four from the free throw line. And Kelly Oubre right now pretty much just showing you, we look, we don't need James Harden, man. Just get rid of this motherfucker. We don't need him. Um... Man, if the Sixers had just knocked down their free throws, man, and and they probably would have won the game. Let's look at the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis Antetokounmpo had, I think, 23 points. 23 points, 13 rebounds, 5 offensive rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, 2, two blocks, but he also had 7 turnovers. And... Um, he hurt the team in that aspect. Matter of fact, half of the team's turnovers came from Giannis. You can't have that. Uh, 10 of 22 from the, show, from the floor, only 3 of 9 from the free throw line. Now look, Dame is proving to be, from just looking at that game, Dame is proving to be a liability on defense. Um, that's to be expected, but effort is one thing, okay? Um, I didn't see a lot of pressure from the Bucks. Um, some of those guys, this is the problem that the Bucks have had for the last couple of years. The Bucks are a great post-defensive team for the last couple of years. They've been a great post-defensive team with the presence of Giannis Antetokounmpo, and, and, of course, Brooke Lopez. But their perimeter defense has sucked. But what I saw tonight was ridiculous. I mean, guys, <coughs> not only were they shooting threes uncontested, guys were, like, getting into their rhythms shooting threes. Like, there, there was not even... Some of those attempts in the fourth quarter, I didn't even see the Bucks contesting those shots. They were just looking. They ain't going to have to, look, man. They, bro, you, you know, you carried the day offensively for the Bucks, so I can't really bitch too much. But, bro, the Bucks will have to fix some things, man. Um, me personally, unless Dane has a night where his shot is falling, 
I think Dame is better with maybe shooting less. He shot the ball 20 times, right? I think Dame, unless he's had one of those nights, he's better off taking his keeping his shot range from in the 15, 16, 17 mark, right? And I think he's better off being more of a playmaker for the Bucks for most of the game. And then maybe in the fourth quarter, if Giannis isn't getting it going, being more offensive-minded then. Or vice versa. There might be games when Lillard is going offensively and that's going to draw the defense to to Dane ultimately. And then the fourth quarter, Giannis takes over. Now, that's the more uh, preferred method. But as you saw, and I got to give Dane uh, props on this one, though. This is something that I've always thought about with Dane being on the Bucks. In the event that Giannis doesn't have it offensively, Giannis was not making jump shots, Giannis was missing chip shots, Giannis was missing all his free throws damn near. Games like that, Chris Middleton is like to the point with his career, he's just not that guy anymore, right? Uh, Pat Connaughton, I don't know what the fuck has happened to this dude. Pat Connaughton during the championship run was hitting threes. Uh, this, remember, this dude was like playing incredible defense, man-to-man defense at times, but especially like strips and steals and... Uh, you know, uh, passing lane steals. Uh, he was, like, jumping and battling for rebounds, getting offensive rebounds. He was a different guy. Now, Pat, Con- Pat Connaughton doesn't look the same physically. I don't know, man. Maybe the Bucks might have to consider making some more changes. We, I think we need some more dogs, man. The Bucks need some more dogs. And the Bucks need, I think, a couple of more greyhounds, if you know what I mean, man. We need a little bit more. We need a little bit more. A little bit more athleticism. That's been the problem with the Bucks the last couple of years, man. But I'm, I'm kind of like all over the place because I saw good things and I saw bad things. Those are some of the bad things I'm seeing, man. But the good thing is, Dane is a guy that can get to the foul line frequently. And you're almost assured he's going to knock down free throws. Dane, I don't know if people know this. Dane is fourth all time in career free throw percentage. When you include the American Basketball Association and the NBA combined, Dame is four fall time. The only people ahead of him, Steph Curry at 90.9%. Steve Nash, second at 90.4%. And Mark Price at a little bit under 90.4%. Dame is an 89.5% career free throw shooter. 89.5% career free throw shooter. That's about as money as you get. 89.5%. It's crazy. So you got a guy who can score, but also get to the foul line and knock down free throws, which can offset these nights when Giannis just is not making free throws because, you know, Chris Milton's not good at putting the ball on the floor and getting in contact and getting to the line. He's not good at that. Never has been and never will be. Drew Holiday has his moments where he can score. But consistently, he can't always offset what Giannis is having a bad night. That's what Dane Lillard can provide offensively. Now, going bad again, in my opinion, the Bucs going to have to do something about their transition defense. That was fucking abysmal. I've never seen them that bad because I didn't see really, I mean, you, you can't, I mean, they look almost like how they did against Miami in some stretches. You can't win like that, bro. You can't be letting Tyrese Maxey get in uncontested layups in fast break situations. Tyrese Maxey? 
But that's that's the coaching too. You know what I'm saying? So that that's on the coach too. It ain't all always on these dudes, man. These players, man. The players gotta go out there and perform. But the strategy is the coaching too. So they gotta figure some shit out there. Talent won the game tonight, but they gotta figure this shit out here because that's a game that they really should have lost, in my opinion. But anyway, they won. So there's that, man. But tell me what you guys think, man.